to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. So happy that you decided to tune in and join us for another great edition today. We are so happy and honored today to be joined by the lovely Senator Nancy Bartow. She's one of our Arizona State Senators. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Glad to be here. So nice to have you. And you're actually from District 15. Yes. What area does that surround? What area are you in then? District 15 is between Scottsdale Road and about 67th Avenue. Okay. And then north of about Bell, it goes all the way to Carefree Highway. So it's kind that's of a, a big rectangular area. That's a pretty big space to cover yes, then. Yes, it wonderful. is. So that's, that's great. It's so wonderful to have you here, Senator Bartow. Thank you. And uh, know that we're gonna be speaking about some great topics today. But before we get into those, if you wouldn't mind just sharing with the viewing audience a little about yourself. Sure, and I appreciate the invitation to be here. Um, before I had an opportunity to serve in the legislature, I was a career stay-at-home mom. Um, Joe and I, my husband, uh, we have three daughters. Uh, they're all grown at this point in time. Uh, they're all through college, married. One of them has even given us a couple of grandkids. Um, but when they were young, uh, we both became very aware of the perils that they were going to be facing in their elementary and high school years um, with the current political um, situations in place. And, you know, it, it, it concerned us, so we started getting involved. Um, so we, we started getting involved. I started becoming a kitchen table lobbyist, writing letters to our local and federal elected officials uh, on, on a variety of different issues. And uh, so things just progress one thing after another so there were a lot of uh, a lot of things that led to my getting involved to the point where I was appointed in 2006 to this office and have, an, have had an opportunity to actually run legislation that affects some of these issues. So being a mom and writing these letters to legislators and to senators, now that you're in that position, does that really make a difference? Do you really get those letters and see those letters as a person in public office if people are watching and they have concerns regardless of what those concerns are? If they were actually to write you a letter or to write a letter to a legislator, Senator, is, is that something that you actually see? Does it really make a difference? You know, people think that it doesn't, but it does. Absolutely. Of course, right now, with our technological age, you know, we get more emails, but we still get the occasional snail mail and phone calls, of course, and they do make a difference. People getting involved makes a huge difference, especially at the voting, at the voting booth. Mm -hmm. It matters that people are informed communicating and voting. And I think it's important to remember because I think people might get intimidated by an office or think, well, they're not going to pay any attention, but that's what you're in office and everyone else is in office for is to be their voice and to represent them. Do most, po do most politicians feel that way, do you feel, working with them or do some of you or? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we're all individuals, so yes. I can't speak for everybody, um, but I certainly try and um, operate that way. And I think most of my colleagues do too. We react to pressure, and we uh, respond to uh, to people that tell us their story. And when we feel like it's in the best interest of our constituents, we act, or we, we try to. We try to address problems. That's why we're here. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking your time to be here today with us. And also, you mentioned your husband, Joe. He happens to be here in studio with us. So it's wonderful to see him here supporting you. and be behind you so and also he mentioned how long have you been married this is our 36th year of marriage wow. in September congratulations Thank that is you. wonderful I'm so happy for you and it's so nice to see you here together so for all of you watching at home today we are discussing civic affairs and our first topic is Women's Health Protection Act House Bill 2284 before we get even into talking and discussing this what is the Women's Health Protection Act that Governor Brewer signed into law Yes, um, the Women's Health Protection Act is, is, a, is a great bill. It's got several very important provisions. The main one deals with putting abortion clinic regulations and uh, standards for inspections on the same level as every other medical facility in the state. Mm -hmm. Shockingly, abortion clinics have been the only medical facilities in Arizona that have had a different standard over the years. And so people that uh, have a claim, a complaint against an abortion clinic 
uh, have had a very strong barrier to having those complaints looked into in a timely manner um, because in order to investigate a complaint, uh, the Department of Health Services or the county or some other government authority has had to get a search warrant first to even go in. And they have to get that from a judge. So it's kept, uh, it's kept abortion clinics sort of unregulated to a detriment of women uh, up until this point. The other things that, that this bill does that are, that are very important, it will allow um, a penalty for an adult who takes advantage of a minor child and aids in their getting an abortion without the parent's consent. Amazingly, we've had parental consent laws on the books for several years, but there's never been a penalty, so it fixes that. And then it does one other very important thing. If there's a child that's been born alive in a clinic, it makes that clinic responsible to the authorities to verify what was done to save the life of that child. Mm. And as a result of uh, the, the great work of the um, pro-life undercover video people, um, w when they went in, they, they discovered that some abortion clinics here in Arizona were found to actually say on tape that nothing would be done if a baby was born alive in that clinic. So this is a really important part of the Women's Health Protection Act. And this is something that of course is a very controversial issue and there's a lot of people that support it and that oppose it. This, this health bill, this Protection Act, this is something that whether somebody supports abortion or not is protecting the woman all around because it's holding up the standards of where, they're, where they should be so the woman will be taken care of if they are there. This is not coming against if somebody doesn't support it. This is protecting the woman and protecting the child. So this is, as you were saying, because a lot of people probably aren't aware that an abortion clinic does not, that for years, now they do, they did not have the same standards of requirements as hospitals and as other doctor's offices did. So that created a lot of issues for health-wise and for women and errors that would happen and they were not held to that same standard. Exactly, and we've seen this uh, same scenario play out throughout the country uh, recently with the Gosnell uh, revelations mm. where clinics were basically given a free pass for decades and I don't know how many women were actually harmed, their lives were snuffed out, and how many babies who were born alive uh, were left abandoned. And, and we could go on about the horror show that we saw in the news mm -hmm. as a result of that. Um, but yes, it's basic health and safety standards for anybody who's seeking health care at an abortion clinic or seeking any kind of service there. Did you see a little bit of change in the support in this bill and in things happening here after the Gosnell trial? That was such a big national story. That was something that was, I think it brought attention to something that a lot of people didn't know before. They didn't realize the dangers of it and that there was irresponsible actions happening in these abortion clinics. Do you feel that that was in a way a positive thing that kind of shed light onto some things that people weren't aware of before? It did help raise the, the awareness. Um, but I'd say the live action video was even more important because that actually happened here in Arizona uh, that showed that the undercover video uh, that showed that, you know, clinic operators are actually violating the law. And so it's very important for health, health officials to be able to go in in a timely manner, not wait months, not have to go before a judge and get a warrant to go ahead and, and deal with safety violations. Uh, for these women. Uh, amazingly though, um, we did have quite a lot of people that still uh, oppose the bill. From the little bit that I know of the bill and that I would think the public would know of the bill, this isn't, I wouldn't even necessarily classify it just a pro-life bill. This is more a, a safety and, and protecting the people who are going there. And so it just, what, what, is there an example of what an opposition would have been? What, what was what was something that they would have said that they would have opposed about making sure that women were safe? You know, and none of, none of their opposition arguments held any water. Mm. Uh, it, well, it passed, right? It passed, <laughs> so. it passed. They raise arguments that frankly don't make sense, as if, uh, you know, women uh, shouldn't be protected at these clinics on the same level as any other health facility. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. 
um, especially the issues of, of uh, being held accountable for being for taking a minor to skirt the law in order to get an abortion without a parent's consent and having a penalty for such, or uh, being able to uh, document what's been done for a child that's been born alive. Uh, these are common sense issues that everybody should support. I think what I've heard it, it's common sense isn't so common anymore. <laughs> That's something that kind of goes by the wayside every once in a while. But uh, just to finish up here, I guess Governor Brewer signed quite a few pro-life bills and bills such as this that are helping protect the women that are going to get abortions and that are helping keep the overall health and standards at a level where they should be. Um, are, do you feel that they're making a difference? Absolutely. Uh, she understands common sense. And uh, she, she owes we, women and the unborn uh, owe her a great deal of thanks for seeing that and for signing that bill into law. But yes, all of those bills, the 30 that have passed in Arizona since 1995, have made a tremendous impact uh, in the lives of women and the unborn over the years. Uh, many bills have passed not only in Arizona but across the country. And as a result, uh, more Americans are pro-life than pro-choice. Uh, since uh, I think 2012 was that when that when that made that turn, and mm. these bills are having a, a great effect to uh, to that to that outcome. Uh, since 2008, between 2008 and 2011, uh, the number of abortions has declined by 13 percent, wow. and we're seeing those declines here in Arizona too. Between uh, 2010 and 11, we had a thousand. 100 fewer abortions in Arizona and between wow. 11 and 12 about 500 fewer abortions. And I know that a lot of those numbers happened whenever a bill passed where women had to start getting a, um, a, 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 a sonogram or yes. yes before they would get the abortion so they realized that there was a living thing inside of them and I know that that had a big effect and that passed just a few years ago so yes it did the the ultrasound ultrasound has thank been, you yes. has been instrumental uh, when women have an opportunity uh, to to see that unborn child on that ultrasound it gives them the information that they need to make the right choice or to make the choice that's that they be, that they believe is the right choice yes. and um, uh, that, that, that has been huge. That well, thank you huge. so much, Senator Bartow, for what you're doing to protect women and to protect our things that should be happening. So thank you so much. And uh, we're going to go ahead and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Senator Bartow. Her information has been displayed periodically at the bottom of the screen. And please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short message. Today's economy impacts us all. Struggling with debt can be overwhelming but there's a smart way to overcome it. The National Foundation for Credit Counseling is a nonprofit organization whose members can create a personalized plan to help you make sound decisions for the future. Times are tough, but you can get through this. You're not alone. To learn how you can meet with a certified counselor in your community, call us or visit debtadvice.org. Hello and welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. Thank you for staying with us. If you just happen to be joining us, today we are joined by Arizona State Senator Nancy Bartow. And today we are discussing civic affairs. And our second topic is breast and other health issues. Today we're sticking with women and women's issues. And as a woman in office, I know that this is something that you probably spend a lot of time on is working towards women's issues and health issues. And so, um, in your role, you're, you're chairwoman of the State Senate Health and Human Services Committee. Uh, you deal with the wide spectrum of issues. What bills have passed? What are, what are you working on right now in, in, in issues, health issues? And it's just been a, a real privilege to be able to chair the health committee in the, in the, sen in the state senate. And this session has been very important uh, for women's issues. Um, I'll talk a little bit about a couple of them. Um, one of them is will actually uh, help men as well, uh, but it's called Right to Try. Mm. And it will give, um, voters will actually have an opportunity to vote on this in November, but the first step was passing it through the legislature. And the thing that Right to Try will do, it will give terminal patients, both men and women, the opportunity to try investigational drugs 
that haven't yet gone all the way through the FDA approval process. Mm -hmm. Now they have passed through the stage one process, which means that the drug's not going to kill them, but uh, it, not the other stages where the efficacy of the drug has been proven or that the side effects may not affect them. Um, but the benefit is it's going to save many lives because so few patients that are terminal, they're hopeless, are, 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 are accepted into clinical trial investigative uh, processes. And so this is going to give them ample opportunity to benefit mm -hmm. for drugs that are just that close to being approved. So I'm excited about that. Wow, so it'll give them hope and other people hope and it may not say it could help them, their life could help what they do could have saved so many other lives if they're willing to try something and it works and it happens and that's wonderful. Yes, we're talking about people's lives being extended uh, and maybe tremendously relieved from symptoms for several years. So wow. it's, it's, an exciting, it's an exciting bill that I'm glad to be a part of. The second bill that we passed this session was Senate Bill 1225, mm. and that deals with women with hetero heterogeneously dense breasts being able to make better informed decisions concerning their breast health. Hmm. So what does, what does that mean, a dense breast? What is that, what are you referring to as far as that? I learned a lot. I'm trying to picture that, so I'm yes. trying to understand yes. what. By running this bill, I learned a, a ton from a doctor, radiologist in Phoenix called, her name is uh, Dr. Nicole Sapphire, mm. and she um, informed me that about 50% of women have heterogeneously dense breasts. Mm -hmm. And the importance of that is twofold. Number one, the American Cancer Society says that women with dense breasts have a greater risk for breast cancer. And the problem is, is that when a woman, woman gets a, a, a mammogram, mm -hmm. those tumors are white and they meld into the white of the uh, dense, density of the breast, so wow. that you can't see them. So the problem that women have been having is that they're not getting maybe the full picture of what's going on when they get a mammogram because frankly, if they have a dense breast, the tumors might not be showing up. Mm. What 1225 will do is allow woman, the woman the information from her radiologist that she may or may not have a dense breast issue and that she may or may not wish to get further testing, an ultrasound or uh, MRI. So, this, so the bill then would make it a standard to to, uh, to qualify whether the woman has dense breasts or does not. Is that what it would do? It gives her that, a report that's more than just the happy gram. Okay. It says, now the, the, ma the mammogram came back normal, but you've got dense breasts. So okay. consider with all your other risk factors, talk this over with your radiologist. You may want to go further with testing to see if there really is something going on because what I learned that, and this is unfortunately a typical scenario, um, a woman named Nancy Capella, she had faithfully gotten her mammograms for a decade and then in 2004 found out that she had stage three cancer and had to go through six surgeries, five chemo treatments, wow. 24 radiology, ra radiation therapy treatments, and she did beat the cancer, but so much of that could have been avoided if it had been detected earlier. Wow. Bills like this, is there, is there opposition to bills like this? Is this a bipartisan issue? Is this something that receives a lot of support? You know, it, it does receive a lot of support because, you know, when you have patients standing before the committee, uh, testifying, telling their story, this is how this lack of information has affected me. Or you have the family member of somebody who died because they didn't detect the cancer early enough and would have benefited from more information earlier. Uh, it's pretty difficult not to act on that information. So there, there was a tremendous amount of support for this bill for women being able to get the information that they need. 
So was that, was that the public that was involved? Was that the public that would come and testify and give testimonies? And how important was their involvement in this process? You know, it's really critical. Um, we, we had probably five or six women testify in both committees in the House and the Senate, and many more telling their stories through email. Um, so it's, you know, as I mentioned, Nancy Capello, she, she has made this uh, one of her life uh, dreams, uh, goals, I should say, and uh, has, has made it a mission to pass this bill throughout the country. And 14 states have passed it so far, and 10 more wow. have introduced it. She's also started a great website um, called Are You Dense Advocacy. Are You Dense Advocacy? Yes. Okay. And so people can go to areyoudense.org and find out a lot more information. Wonderful. And so this is, uh, is this something women can find out just on their own, or is this something they have to find out through a health care provider, or just is, is a regular exam going to give this, give them this information, or is this something specific they have to do? How do they find out about this? Well, it's really standard of care now for radiologists to provide this information to women when they go for their mammogram. Mammogram, I know. Mammogram, <laughs> yes. Um, that word is but, okay. <laughs> no, just in case, now that 1225 is signed into law, they will have to provide that information. And so, you know, I think the more patients that are aware that they should expect more communication with their doctor, the better, the better their health. Uh, better informed they'll be to make those choices. Wow, and if you had people writing in letters and coming and testifying, this is must be a little bit of a common issue. This isn't just of, of something that has happened once or twice. This has happened multiple times. I can imagine how much it would have touched you to be able to sit there and listen to these stories and then know that you could help be part of something that was passed that could yeah. save their lives or their daughter's lives or their granddaughter's lives. Yes. it's. Uh, that's the joy of being able to be in this position, frankly. I'm always learning something new, um, and being in a position to actually act on it is really an incredible feeling. Are there any other health issues currently that you're working on or any other legislation that's in the legis or that anything that's happening or getting ready to happen right now? Well, I also, uh, part of the committee that I chair is Health and Human Services, ah. so we'll be coming up with a special session on, on Child Protective Services within the next few weeks. Um, as you know, we've had a lot of issues there. That's not exactly health related, but that's a big one on my plate. So we've been having a lot of meetings, uh, making sure that the agency is reformed going forward and that children are kept safe. Um, not exactly health related, but it certainly is going to save lives when we get our act together and try and do a better job um, not only preventing child abuse in Arizona, but making sure that um, when they are in the system that they are kept safe. Mm. And that's something that should definitely be on our priority to protect yes. the innocent that can't protect themselves. So yes. I, I can't, I can't, I've had people on from different organizations that work with them and it's, I can't imagine being in that position because I know that myself it would be hard to keep my personal emotions out of legislation because I can't imagine anyone that would abuse or hurt a child. But it's heartbreaking. It is. And to, you know, the state is coming from a place of reacting. And so it's a, it's a very difficult situation yes. to be in for a state agency. There are so many people in the child protective um, service realm that do a fantastic yes. job. They do. Well, thank you so much for everything you're doing, Senator Bartow, and thank you for your time, and thank you so much for watching Joy in Our Town. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.